by the year 1657. The situation in the Mughal royal family was at a very delicate juncture. The old yet still powerful Shah Jahan had posted his three sons in the three corners of the empire. Shuja in Bengal, Aurangzeb in Deccan and Murad in Gujarat. But as for Dara, Shah Jahan had kept him by his side in the capital as a co-ruler. This helped Dara gain popularity among the citizens of Delhi and Agra and among the surrounding Rajput kingdoms. If any of Dara's brothers decide to take the capital, it would not be easy for him to penetrate into Dara's strong sphere of influence. But on September 6, 1657, this arrangement was put to the test when Shah Jahan fell fatally ill. Let's face it, we want our generation next to know our past. Children born outside of India or in the metro cities know only a little about India's ages-old history, her struggles and her heroes. And they would rather watch cartoons than read books, right? But what if there are kinds of cartoons about these topics? That is what Glimpses is all about. We have made more than 50 animations and are continuously making more. Support us by crowdfunding these projects and if you have any ideas for us to make animations on, let us know by filling out this survey. Let us reconnect our future with our roots. Shah Jahan had suddenly fallen seriously ill due to severe constipation. Within a month, his health deteriorated to the extent that he could not execute daily court and Dara had to take complete command of the court affairs. The first thing Dara did was to ensure that the news of Shah Jahan's illness did not leak, lest it provoke his brothers to get anxious and take to a coup. But such big news could not be suppressed for long. The Emperor hasn't appeared in the Jarokha for almost two weeks now. Something is not quite right in the royal palace. I have heard that Prince Dara is conducting the court and the Emperor is nowhere to be seen. The Prince is not allowing even the ministers to meet the Shanshah. You fools! Haven't you realized yet? It's not just the palace, but nothing is alright with the empire itself. We merchants are not allowed to go towards Gujarat or Bengal or Deccan without undergoing rigorous checks at the check posts. Can you not see what it means? What on earth can that be? Hey, tell us, what is going on? It can only mean one thing. The emperor is dead. And Prince Dara is trying to secure the throne for himself before the news reaches his brothers. What? Emperor is dead? is dead. Shh! Careful, you fools! You will get us all killed! Dara's trying to suppress the news of Shah Jahan's illness had the opposite effect. Rumors that the emperor is already dead circulated first in the capital and then across the empire. Immediately, Prince Murad crowned himself as the new Mughal emperor and prepared his army to march toward the capital to claim the throne. Shuja, on receiving the news in Bengal, did the same. Aurangzeb, however, experienced as he was in a cunning stratagem, did not make such a hasty declaration, but corresponded with both his brothers, offering his support to them. 
In the meantime, Shah Jahan's health surprisingly improved and he again regularly attended the courts and displayed himself at the Jharokha. He sent letters asking his three sons to remain in their provinces. But it was too late. They suspected that Dara had used the Emperor's seal to forge those letters and was using a look-alike of Shah Jahan to deceive the public. Three hostile armies now marched towards Delhi. Although the Emperor's decades of experience, his vast armies and almost limitless treasury were now on Dara's side, he was desperately in need of the good luck he enjoyed in the first two Kandahar campaigns. Shuja is approaching by the way of the river and might reach sooner than the other two. We will first deal with him. Suleiman, my son, you and Raja Jai Singh shall take your 20,000 soldiers to deal with him first. Do not harm him. Uh, father? <coughs> do, do not harm him unless he refuses to return without a fight. We need to avoid war, son. One war will start another and then another. And these wars will engulf the whole empire. Parley with Shuja first and convince him that a fight is unnecessary and that it will bring doom to everyone. As you say, Baba Hazrat. Send Jaswan Singh to the west. He has close to 22,000 men under his command. Murad's much smaller force of less than 10,000 will be no match against it. Pardon me, Chapana. But Jaswan Singh has only been a courtier almost all his life and has little experience of warfare. We do not need war amongst ourselves. Understand this. <laughs> Murad will not choose to fight against such a large army. And Jaswant, being a seasoned courtier, will surely convince him to return to Gujarat, relinquish his title of emperor, and assist me in restoring order to the empire. But father, what about Aurangzeb? I'm sure he has been waiting for this day to come. Spies have reported that he is moving with more than 20,000 men. Hmm. He troubles me the most too. But after Murad is turned back, Jaswan Sami shall face him the next and either talk or threaten him into going back to Deccan. And if it doesn't work, defeat him in the battle into submission. And even if that rebel gets through Jaswant, a battle with him will weaken Aurangzeb and also buy time for Suleiman and Jai Singh to return from East to counter him. Shah Jahan's experience made the frighteningly dire situation look easily manageable. Perhaps luck was indeed with Dara. Will Shah Jahan's ingenious plan of countering rebels approaching from the three sides succeed? Or will Aurangzeb see through them and outsmart them? All these questions will be answered in the next chapter of Aurangzeb and Dara Shugo.